Today, I'm gonna to show you how to repair Windows system files without reloading Windows. This is the video that many computer techs don't want you to see. In fact, if you're one of my customers, turn this video off right now. You don't wanna see this. <laughs> Stay tuned. You know what, there's a problem in the computer industry that drives me absolutely crazy. I've talked about this in other videos and that's why I think I'm gonna do a series of videos on this topic. In the computer industry, we have something called nuke and pave techs. These are typically technicians that are new to the industry and don't know how to fix a broken Windows install. So their first go-to is to just wipe the system and reload Windows. Unfortunately, this causes a lot of problems for customers because it, it's rarely necessary. And what's worse is I can't even count the amount of times that this has been done to one of my customers at a big box store and their data being not being backed up beforehand. You remember that little piece of paper that you signed when you dropped your computer off? Typically with your signature, that paper takes away all liability from the company of your data. So they really don't care about your data. But you know, Windows is an incredibly repairable operating system. You know, I have in the past often criticized Microsoft for some of the decisions that they make. In fact, the videos where I criticize Microsoft are some of the most popular videos I have on this channel. However, one thing that they really do well is give us an incredible amount of tools and procedures that can be used to fix a broken copy of Windows. So today, we're looking at the system file checker command. And no way, before you click off this video, I'm gonna cover the proper way to use the system file checker. I'm not just gonna tell you to run SFC scan now and be done with it like you see on most internet forums. And that's because FSC almost never works on a broken system for a variety of different reasons. Most of those reasons can be dealt with pretty easily. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in this video. But before we do that, we got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Okay, so the System File Checker tool, or SFC, is a tool that simply checks the integrity of Windows system files. And if it finds any corrupted files, it replaces them with non-corrupted versions. SFC is able to do this because Windows keeps a cached copy of all of its system files that it calls the system image. The reason why SFC almost always fails by itself is because the system image isn't always up to date. And in some cases, the cached copies of Windows system files could be corrupted themselves. Let's say you loaded Windows 10 with version 1909. You've been using the system for several years and installing build updates as they come out. If your Windows image has cached system files that date all the way back to 1909, then SFC can't use those system files for build 22H2. So it will throw up an error like this saying that Windows Resource Protection found corrupted files but was unable to fix some of them. Now, you could dig through the SFC logs and try to figure out which system files SFC determined were corrupted and try to replace those files manually with the correct versions for your specific build of Windows. However, there's a way easier way. That's by using DISM, which stands for the Deployment Image Servicing and Management Tool. This is another tool that Microsoft includes in Windows, which will check those cached system files to determine if they are corrupted or if they're the proper version for your build of Windows. And if it finds problems, it will fix those system files and cache the new ones so that FSC can run successfully. So now that I've explained to you what these tools do, let me show you how they work in action. Let's do it. 
Okay, so we're here in Windows, and what you'll see on most forums is someone just telling you to run SFC scan now. And to do that, you just click on start, you type CMD, you make sure to run it as administrator. You have to say yes to the user account control, but once you do that, you get your command prompt open and you just run SFC space forward slash scan now and hit enter. And it'll go through the process of scanning your system files. And this will take a while to complete, but once it completes, it almost always fails. In fact, in my experience, I would say it fails 95% of the time. And the reason why it fails is because chances are your system file cache is just out of date and you have to update your system image before SFC can properly replace those corrupted files that it found. And to do that, let's get back on the computer and I'll show you how. Okay, so as you can see right here, it says Windows Resource Protection did not find any integrity violations. And that's because I ran FSC several times when I was preparing for this video and writing notes and things like that. So. SFC has this install of Windows solid right now. But if yours doesn't, if yours gives you this error here, then let me show you what to do. All you do is just type DISM space forward slash online. And online just means it's the operating system that's currently running. It doesn't mean you're on the internet. The next thing you want to do is hit forward slash cleanup dash image space again, and there's a couple different switches you can use here. If you just want to check the system image, you can do forward slash check health. And from there, all it's going to do is check to see if the system image has any problems. And you can also, if you want to, if you hit enter on this one, it does a really quick check. But if you want a more thorough check to check to see if the system image is good, you can run instead of check health, what you would run is scan health. And by doing that, it goes through the process of doing a real scan to check if the system file cache is up to date and that there's nothing corrupted. And this one's going to take a little bit longer than the last one because it goes a lot deeper. Okay, so right there, it said it didn't find any corruption. And if that's the case, you can just move on and run SFC scan now. But if it does find something corrupted, then what you would do is instead of scan health, what you want to do is you want to type restore health. And by typing restore health, it'll go through the process of doing the original scan that it did. But if it finds any problems, it will fix those problems rather than just scanning them and letting you know what's wrong. And in all reality, at this stage right here, you could probably skip all the other switches that I showed you and just do restore health because ultimately that's what you want to do anyway. There really isn't many reasons to scan it without fixing the problems. So let's move on and I'll show you the next step. If for whatever reason you run into errors at this point, there's one more step that you should take and that's actually a really important one. If DISM for whatever reason can't fix the system file image, you might have to actually tell it where your source image is. And for that, there's a really easy way to do it. And all you do is open up your browser and then search for the media creation tool. And then you're going to want it for whatever version of Windows you have. In this case, we're doing Windows 10. So go ahead and go there, click on right here on Microsoft site, download Windows 10 disk image. And then from there, you're going to scroll down where it says create Windows 10 install media. So go ahead and hit download now, and it's going to download the media creation tool. And from there, go ahead and run it. You have to click yes to the user account control. And then from there, we can go ahead and close our browser now. And it's going to go through and it's going to get a few things ready. This might take a little bit of time, so just be patient. Okay, once we're at this stage, all you got to do is go ahead and hit accept and then wait for it to get more things ready. You're gonna spend a lot of time waiting for things to get ready in this process. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here. Okay, once you get to this stage, you don't wanna upgrade this PC now. That's a waste of time. What you wanna do is you wanna create the install media. So go ahead and click on the second one and hit next. 
and then go ahead and you can leave all this default here and hit next. And then I'm gonna go ISO file right here, but you can also use a USB drive. I'm gonna use the ISO file right now. And then you hit next and it's gonna ask you where to download this ISO file at. And it's perfectly fine doing it on your desktop. I actually have mine sitting inside of the downloads folder and I've already done that. So I'm gonna skip this step right here. So once you do that, it's gonna go ahead and go through the process of downloading the ISO and creating it for you. And once you do that, that's all you need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and close this right now because I've already done that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes and it's gonna clean things up. So on mine, if you go into the downloads folder, here's the Windows ISO image that we downloaded and all you have to do is double click it and it'll go ahead and mount it. If you go to this PC, you'll see that it's mounted into a virtual drive and it's on the D drive. And what we're looking for is if you go into the sources folder, you're gonna look for this file right here. It's the install ESD. Now yours might be installed WIM and if it is, that's fine, both will work. But mine's the ESD. You just have to check to see which one you have before we go on to the next step. And to do that, all we do is you go into your command prompt. If you push the up key, it will give you the last command you ran. So that's what we're doing right here. And you wanna space after it. You wanna hit forward slash and type in source. And then you wanna use a colon. And then from there, we wanna give it the path to this file right here, this install ESD. So this is the path right here, D forward slash sources. So from there, all we have to type in is D colon backslash sources backslash install.esd. And then from there, once we hit enter, it's gonna go through the same process, but it's gonna use the image from that ISO file that you just downloaded in its process of checking the system file images. So I'm gonna skip ahead real quick until this is done. And I'm gonna show you one more switch that you can use on this. Okay, so DISM will sometimes use the image file that you specified, but it will also use Windows Update. And if that happens and you want to limit its access to Windows Update, there's one more switch you can use. So we'll go back to the command prompt here. And for whatever reason, you might have different reasons for wanting to do this. Maybe you don't have internet access and you don't even want it to try to access Windows Update. And if that's the case, that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit up arrow again to get the last command that we ran. We're going to hit space. We're we're going to do another forward slash and then we're going to type limited access and by typing that what it's going to do is it's going to error out because clearly i spelled it wrong so we're going to hit the up arrow again and right here here's what i did wrong i typed limited it's not limited i'm sorry it's limit access okay so my bad. So we type limit access, we hit enter, and it goes through the process. But in this case, it's not going to use Windows Update. It's only going to use this image file that we have right here in this ISO. And it's probably going to take about the same amount of time. But for whatever reason, if you want to limit its access to the internet and Windows Update, then that's how you do it. Okay, so at this point, you should be able to run SFC scan now, and it should work fine. I used to always get frustrated whenever I was trying to find a solution to a problem in Windows, and someone would suggest to just run SFC scan now because it literally never fixed anything. That was until I found how to use DISM. If you want SFC to work, you have to give it uncorrupted current versions of your system files. Then it does its job exactly how it's supposed to. By using these two commands in combination, like I've shown you in this video, it will fix most issues that many people would just throw their hands up and Reload Windows. In fact, while doing research for this video, the system here that I'm using actually has three hard drives on it. One is just for gaming, and I have another one that's for video editing. The last one is just a temporary drive that I use to install Windows for videos just like this. In fact, that's what's running on it right now. For the longest time, I've been having excessive hard drive usage issues on this gaming install that I have on this system, but running SFC scan now solved the problem. So like I said before, it's almost never necessary to reload a modern version of Windows. I mean, it's gotta be really messed up for me to even consider reloading Windows.
So you know, this is not gonna be the only video on this topic that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through many more videos on how to save a damaged copy of Windows. And I'm also gonna create a new playlist specifically dedicated to repairing Windows. So if there's any other issues on this topic that you'd like me to cover, then please mention them in the comments below and I might make a video on it. But if you like videos like this, then check out this one where I show you how to re-enable the automatic registry backups that Microsoft stupidly disabled for some reason. This is a feature that you will hopefully never need, but you really should turn it back on anyway. As always, you guys have a great day.